Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this series of learn angular js step by step in 8 hours. Yes, you guessed it right, in 8 hours. Now, as we will learn angular js in this series step by step, we will also create a small project side by side. Because my belief is that when you learn any technology, if you just learn part by part, if you just take topic 1, topic 2, topic 3, it becomes very academic. But the time you take a technology and you start doing a project, you learn quickly, you learn to the point and you learn in a very practical way. So in this complete series, I'm going to go and teach you AngularJS, but also I will be executing a project side by side so that you learn not just theoretically, but practically. So let us first try to understand what exactly is AngularJS? What is the motive of AngularJS? AngularJS is nothing but it is a JavaScript framework which helps you to bind HTML UI with JavaScript objects. In simple words, it is a binding framework. Now at this moment, Angular has two versions. One is the 1.x version. When I say 1.x means 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.5, 1.4. 1 so this is the 1.x version and there is a 2.0 version. The 2.0 version is actually still in beta and the 1.x version has been used in projects for past uh, 5 to 6 years and it is very matured. So what we will do is we will start with the 1.x version so you can see that the latest one is 1.5 at this moment so we're going to use 1.5 and you can see that this version is in rc that means it is a release candidate it can be used in production while this version is in beta so what we will do is we will start with the 1.x version but in the later of later part of the video series i will also cover 2.0 and we will see that what is the difference between 2.0 and the 1.x version so this video series will be using 1.5 uh, version uh, for teaching. Now for this training, we will need two things. One is browser and I specifically recommend or I will say specifically for this training, please stick to Chrome browser. Why Chrome? Because Chrome has awesome debugging capability for Angular and JavaScript and jQuery. Uh, so when it comes to JavaScript debugging, I really love what Chrome does. So one is the Chrome browser and second is Visual Studio. Now Visual Studio is optional. If you wish, you can go and code in Notepad as well. But you know, in Notepad, you won't get those IntelliSense, right? So I'm going to use Visual Studio, but feel free to replace Visual Studio with Notepad or any, any other tool. So let us go ahead and let us create a simple project. Uh, and let us try to understand that what do we mean by binding framework? What do we mean, you know, when we say Angular binds HTML and JavaScript object. Now, one very important point to note about Visual Studio is that Visual Studio is a is Microsoft's product, and uh, because it's a Microsoft product, you know, and when you go and you create a new project using Visual Studio, for example, you create ASP.NET or you create ASP.NET MVC or whatever, right? It will have that Microsoft's stamp on it. So, in other words, when you create this project, you'll find that there are some C# files. You will find that there is some web config file, you will find that, you know, uh, there is something which is related to Microsoft. But because we are learning Angular now and uh, mostly with Angular, we'll be using HTML and jQuery and JavaScript. All of these technologies need only two things. One is HTML and one is JavaScript, right? So I do not really want in this project, you know, any kind of stamp of Microsoft. I just want HTML file and JavaScript file. So what I will do is I'm not going to go and use any one of these templates uh, of Visual Studio. Actually, I'm going to go and open a website. So you can see that there is something here called as open a website. What is open a website? Uh, open a website is nothing but it goes and it opens a folder. And in that folder, I can go and add whatever things I need. I can control it. So when I take a template, when I say a new project solution, I get stuck with Microsoft. And also, if you observe very closely today's web architecture, it is divided into two things. One is the client side. Client side means what runs inside the browser. And one is the server side. So in client side, you have HTML, you have JavaScript, you have Angular, you have jQuery, 
you have knockout you have you have the javascript and html running right and on the server side uh, you have the respective uh, companies like microsoft having asp.net or uh, you have jsp or you have servlets or you have php right so basically if you see today's web architecture it is divided into two part one is html javascript running on the client side and the other one is the server side uh, so for now because we are doing the client side technology i don't want in this project any kind of stamp of microsoft right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and create a new folder and i will say that this in this folder i'll name this folder as um because we are doing a project you know what we will do is we will do a very simple customer screen in angular where we will have customer code we will have customer name and customer amount right so i will name this as uh, angular customer project okay so in this folder you know i'm going to go and uh, create the angular project right so i will say open the website so remember website means nothing but it's a folder and inside the folder i will put css i will put javascript and so on right so remember that this folder at this moment is in my c drive right so in my c drive we have the angular customer project and i will just say open so there you can see that my folder is opened and at this moment i have nothing in this project and uh, if i go to the folder uh, I don't see anything created and uh, that's what I want right so let us go ahead and spend this coming uh, five six minutes discussing why angular when I gave the definition of angular saying it's a binding framework what does it mean actually so let us go ahead and add a simple HTML page remember this project is the client project you know it's not going to have any ASP.NET it's not going to have any C sharp code right uh, so I'm going to go and add a new item here and I will add a HTML page. So add a new item and let us pick HTML. So you can see that there is a HTML file. So in this uh, project, you know, we are only concerned with HTML, JavaScript and CSS, right? And as we said that we are going to go and create a customer screen. So let me name this page as customer.html. So in this screen, we are going to have three fields, customer code, customer name and customer amount. But before we move ahead, let us go and try to understand why Angular and then we will start with the project. So you can see that uh, I have this very, very simple website here and it has only one HTML page in this. And I really like that how it is so lightweight, so much disconnected from uh, C Sharp. So we said that Angular binds HTML with JavaScript, right? or I will say HTML UI with JavaScript. So you can see that I have created a very simple UI here. Uh, it just has uh, two text boxes, customer name and customer code, and some div tags here to display data of customer name, customer code. So now this UI will actually talk with a JavaScript object. So there is a JavaScript object called as customer and the customer UI HTML binds with it, right? Now in JavaScript, um, you do not have a class concept as such but uh, what you can do is you can create a function and you can create an instance of that function so basically when you say create a class in javascript uh, it is something like this so you'll say function and uh, you will define the properties using using the this keyword so this dot customer name is equal to share and this dot customer code is equal to 1001 so now we can create an instance of this customer class here now remember i'm using this word class 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 but it is a function but because i know that uh, this tutorial uh, will be watched by a lot of developers who are coming from background which is java or c sharp so i just want to make sure that i talk in their language so basically uh, you would probably go and create a customer object from this javascript class and your intention would be to bind this customer object with these text boxes so you want to bind the customer name with this text box you want to bind the customer code with this text box right 
So in order to achieve the same, um, what developers do, you know, they write such kind of functions. So you can see that uh, I have written two functions here. One is UI to object. UI to object means I will take the data from the UI. So you can see here I'm saying uh, document dot get element ID by customer name and I'm setting to the property and here I'm saying document dot get element ID that means from this text box and set to this property right in the same way we also can do we also need to have one more uh, uh, function here object to UI so object to UI means uh, here in you know we will uh, take the data from the object so you can see here I'm taking the data from the customer object and pushing it to the UI. So normally what developers do, you know, they write such kind of a binding code. Now this binding code, you know, comes in various forms. For example, uh, when I talk with C Sharp guys, they term this code as a behind code. Some people call this code as a controller code. Some people call this code as a gel code. So whatever it is, but this code binds the UI and the object. And uh, think about it, you know, if you have a table a grid, then this binding code can become complex, right? And that's what exactly Angular does. Angular helps you to bind this UI and the object so that you don't have to write such kind of a binding code. So the first thing is, let us get Angular in our project. Now there are two ways of doing it. One is, uh, you can go to google.com and say angular js right and uh, you can go here and uh, download it manually remember download the left side and not the right side the right side is 2.0 so you can go here and download the angular js file and put it into your project so that is one way of doing it the other way is you know, you know if you want to use the visual studio feature you can use something called as manage nuget packages and uh, you can go and search for angular here so i can go and say angular js now you can see that uh, we have come up with a lot of search in angular here uh, what we need to use in a project at this moment is angular core now remember that at the core angular is a binding framework but angular became so famous that people wanted to use it with uh, bootstrap people wanted to use it for single page application people wanted to animate it and whatnot so the other angulars what you see over here are nothing but they are modules of angular they are extensions of angular but the core angular only does binding remember angular's main goal is binding for example jquery's main goal is to make your javascript simple right and to make it compatible with browsers but at the end of the end of the day what happened is jquery was used at a lot of places so people wanted jquery grid people wanted jquery, jquery tree view control and whatnot and then the other parts of jquery got created so in the same way we have angular core here and then we have lots of other subsets uh, but at the heart at the core the whole goal of angular was binding binding and binding right so let us go and install angular core for now the other modules you know we will speak as we go by so there you can see that angular has been brought into my project you can see this red sign here saying that the package is installed and if i go here you can see very neatly visual studio has created a scripts folder and in that he has put files of angular now you can see that angular has downloaded a couple of files here um, the main file here is angular.js and angular.mean.js now this angular.js uh, is the file you know which has uh, which is a file with comments and proper indenting if you see angular mean.js it is nothing but it is a compressed version of angular.js so this angular mean.js does not have comments it does not have indenting so when you are going to production you will actually use angular mean.js when we are in development we will use angular.js so in our course we are going to go and use angular.js because we are at this moment developing this project you can also see there is something called as angular mocks.js this angular mocks.js is meant for mock testing uh, we will talk about this later on so for now you can excuse this js file you can uh, you don't have to look into it but in case you are really curious what is mock testing i would suggest to go and watch our mock testing 
video series what we have on questpond.com with that you can get an idea of what exactly mock testing is but this thing over here is for testing so for now let us go and start with angular.js so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and delete all of this because angular has promised me that he can bind my customer object with my screen right so let us go ahead and let us see that how angular does the magic for us so i'm going to go and first drag and drop this angular.js file on my screen here so that i have reference to angular and uh, now let us start coding now before i start uh, showing you angular syntaxes uh, i would like to make a very important point about angular syntaxes angular syntaxes are declarative so they are declarative in nature uh, till now you know if you see if you're a programmer in c sharp or java or javascript you have you are uh, you were using the procedural style of programming procedural style of programming means for example let us say you want to write a for loop right so what you do you say let us say you want to write a double for loop i will say so for int i equal to zero you know and then um, you'll say uh, i greater than something right and i plus plus right uh, so you can have something like this um, a for loop so let us say it's a double for loop like this so for inside a for right so if you see now this is procedural okay very quickly let me expand this so this is procedural here i write exactly how to achieve that double for loop but in declarative what i can do is i can just say here 1000 by 1000 so in declarative we have tags we declare it we don't say how we are going to achieve it while in procedural we exactly say how to do it right so till now you have been a procedural programmer must be you are you, you are doing jquery or javascript or c sharp you know where you exactly write what you want to achieve but in in angular you know you just declare it and it works so all angular syntaxes starts with the word ng hyphen and then whatever so ng hyphen bind ng hyphen change ng hyphen controller so ng that word two letter word ng comes from that word angular so a n g u l a r so ng hyphen now also a quick note here um why they have provided this letter hyphen in between why didn't angular say ng animate or ng app or ng bind html specification says that if you don't want to collide with my tags then create tags with the letter hyphen in between or the the word hyphen in between html specification says that i would never create any kind of tag with the word hyphen right so if you see any framework like knockout or angular they all use the word hyphen so that they do not clash with html tags because html will never create a tag with the word hyphen right so the first step what is the first step if i want to bind this class with this ui the first step is i need to create a instance i need to say customer obj equal to new customer and bind it with the customer screen right so that is done by the declarative tag ng controller so ng controller customer so what this word over here says is that he will create an object of customer internally and bind it with the customer screen now uh, you also want to bind the property so for that we have ng model so ng model and with this text box i want to bind customer name again ng model with this text box i want to bind customer code so remember i said that angular is declarative declarative and declarative in other words these two tags here ng controller and ng model do the following things first this ng controller tag creates an instance of the new customer object second the the two ng model tags here you know provide the input or they bind it with the text box so they they take the property value and bind it to the text box right now we would also like to display this value somewhere right for example 
when you go and type something on the screen right it will go and update this customer object internally but we would like to also go and display this value on a div tag or on a span tag or somewhere so to, so to display the value we need to use something called as expression so if i want to just display that what is typed in this customer name you can see that down below in the div tag i am specifying a expression the expression starts with double curly brackets and ends with a double curly brackets so on the top i want to display a customer name and down i want to display the customer code so you can see that how easy it is to to bind your objects with angular you know if you remember our previous code you know where we were having those two methods we were setting the properties and here we are on angular now just tagging tagging and tagging now let me uh, put you in thinking shoes let us say i have two ng controllers like this let us say i have two div tags and two ng controllers like this what you see on your screen now a very simple question to you in this scenario will we have two instances or single instance created because remember what i said sometimes back this ng controller over here creates a instance of this customer class so the question here is that will he create different different instances and tie to this div tag or will he create one big instance and tie up to this div tie up to both the div tags think about it what do you think i will give you 5 seconds on this so i know that uh, the answer in your head would be two different instances because logically as a programmer you would think that if i have created two uis then i want a different instance here and i want a different instance here right and in one single ui it is very much possible that you will have two three classes so you will have customer you will have supplier so you don't want one global instance right for all the controllers you want different different instances so that you know you can manage your ui properly so over here definitely you know you want a different instance of customer class here and a different instance of a customer class here so if that is the logical answer the next question is so if we have two three controller instances in a page what is the scope of that instance for example this customer object what is the scope the whole whole html and this customer what is the scope so if we are talking about multiple instances in the same html of angular so if you are saying that there are multiple instances angular will create the question is what is the scope of both the objects now as per angular's thought process the scope of this customer instance is from this div tag start to the end of this div tag so this is the scope of the customer object that means of this customer object and the scope of this customer object is start of this div tag to till the end of this div tag right so there are two instances and the uh, scope is from the start of the tag till the end of the tag now please remember that it is not compulsory that you need to go and define ng controller over a div tag it can be a form tag it can be a span tag it can be anything right so the scopes of both these instances are completely isolated from each other in other words you know this customer variable cannot be accessed inside this uh, ng controller uh, div tag okay but now the question is who does this scope instancing who is responsible uh, to to create a scope and attach to this div tag start and end and to this div tag start and end because if you see at this moment the variables are connected to the this instance so this instance means if i go and create a an object of customer let us say i go and create a object of customer saying obj1 is equal to new customer like this so and if i create one more instance let us say obj2 
Now, this instance variable, right, is different from this instance variable. So basically, here, if you see this instance, right, this, this keyword points to the current instance of the object. And now here we are talking about instances, you know, which are defined to a tag, right? So definitely, uh, you know, this keyword won't work here. So there should be something else over here. And that's where exactly Angular gives you a service called as dollar scope. Again, I repeat, Angular has a ready-made service called as dollar scope. So rather than using the this instance, you need to go and use the dollar scope variable or dollar scope service, I will say, not a variable, dollar scope service of Angular. But now the question is that, where does this dollar scope object come from? Means, uh, do we need to go and declare something like this, where uh, dollar scope is equal to new something, right? Or where does this object actually come from? So you don't need to go and declare this object. You need to go and define this object as a parameter of your function. And Angular will automatically come in and inject this object. Again, I repeat, Angular will automatically come in. He will hunt for the dollar scope uh, parameter and he will inject a ready-made object and give it to you. This is termed as dependency injection. In case you are new to dependency injection, I would suggest you to go and watch the videos on QuestPond, you know, where we have, where we have uh, talked about dependency injection and inversion of control. But let me quickly give you a one line definition over here. Dependency injection is a concept, you know, wherein the framework comes in and injects the object rather than you creating it. Now you would wonder that what is the benefit of dependency injection? The benefit here is now, for example, if you see, let us say that some instances are tied up to a div tag, right? Some instances can be tied up to a span tag. Some instances can be global, right? So in case if let us say, uh, you know, you were supposed to take up that work of creating the object, then it would be like this dollar scope is equal to new div instance right or new span instance so rather than you getting into decision making of what kind of instance should be created angular says that you don't worry about it you worry about your business logic you worry about uh, you know attaching the variables you know uh, binding the variables i will take care of instance management i will hunt for that tag and i will inst i will inject the appropriate uh, instance management object to you so with dependency injection, you know, you get decoupled from unnecessary work. So remember, there are two concepts, you know, which you can go and see the video on Questpon VD. One is inversion of control. Inversion of control means invert your unnecessary things to someone else and you concentrate on your work. For example, over here, what is the work of this customer class? The work of this customer class is, is to look into customer name property is to look into customer code property, is to do validations of their property, is to do uh, some other things which is related to customer, not getting into scope management and then, you know, which it is attached to a div tag or a span tag, you know, what is the, what is the lifetime of the object and etc. So that he says that I will take care of, care of it. So um, when I go and write a dollar scope like this, it means that the dollar scope object will be dependency injected by the angular framework remember the complete framework of angular you know as i go ahead teaching you in the class you will see that it is dependency injection dependency injection and dependency injection so remember these are termed as services dollar scope and then you will see dollar http you will see dollar sc so whatever you see by the word dollar in angular these are ready-made services of angular and if you want to use them you cannot create object of it uh, and angular uh, you know creates them automatically inside you have to just go and reference like this and angular will do the dependency injection for you so now this is great uh, we have uh, different different instances 
uh, each one of these instances are created automatically by the dollar scope each one of these instances are isolated from each other they have their own scope so instance of this customer is from this div tag to this div tag and instance of this customer is from this div tag to this div tag so they are completely isolated from each other now even if they are isolated at the end of the day they are running inside the same page the same html page right so at some moment of time definitely i would like that these instances to communicate with each other for example now think about you have a web page where you have two controller instances of angular one of customer and one of address so definitely you know you would like that uh, both of these instances should be isolated definitely but also at some moment of time if the customer wants the address data he should be able to access it if the address wants the customer data he should be able to able to access it so in other words you know i do not really want it to be so isolated that they cannot talk with each other and that's where exactly we have something called as app or ng app ng app is a instance you know which is global right to your page it's a, it's a angular uh, object which is global to the page and all the ng controller instance belongs to the app so the ng app you know you can go and define it on the body so you can say here ng app and you can give some name here my app now remember again uh, you know this ng app has to be defined on a tag uh in such a way that it encloses all the ng controllers for example over here you can see uh, i have defined it on the body tag so it actually encloses all the controller again there is no compulsion that you should define ng app on the body it can be on a form or it can be on a div tag in other words uh, i can also go ahead and define it on a div tag but again uh, you know the requirement here is that this div tag should enclose all the other div tags where the ng controllers are defined right so i can go and define ng app here as well no problem okay but the point is that because this app is the top object of all the controller instances it should be defined in such a way that it encloses all the tags of ng controller so you can think about you know there is an internal angular dom a document object model where we have app at the top and then we have ng controller ng controller instances so we have the app instance the ng app instance at the top and then we have lot of ng controller instances and at any moment of time if these ng controller instances want to communicate with each other right or if you want to control them then they go via the ng app so we are all set up now uh, we have the ng app we have the ng controllers we have the scope management system at place but at the end of the day somebody has to come in and kick start all this right somebody has to go and uh, create object of the app create object of controller so there should be some kind of a startup code which kicks off angular because remember at the end of the day these are simple tags and these are tags with this thing called hyphen so if it is hyphen the browser will never parse them because it is not html remember as html says that any tag with the word hyphen in it is not my tag right so definitely you know this is not tag of html so browser will just leave it but then somebody has to parse it and who will parse it angular so at some place we have to kick off angular and say okay now here is the app here are the controllers start working right and that's where we need two lines of code here one is we need to create the app so i'll say where my app is equal to angular this is the way we call angular directly right angular dot module so can you go and load my module my app so at this moment we have only my app module so i'm loading it uh and uh, square brackets right so what is the square brackets now remember that it is very much possible that modules are not only your modules sometimes you want to go and load modules uh, which are uh, you know subsets of angular or which are created from the angular framework for example if you remember uh, when we saw the new get package we said that there is core angular and then there are other 
angular frameworks as well like uh, ng uh, routing then you have ng animation right angular animation so do you want to go and load any kind of third party angular modules over here other than the core so at this moment i'm not loading them but in the later part of the videos you know i will show that how to go and load third party angular modules and uh, how to use them so the first thing is i have created my app the second thing is uh, i need to go and tell to this app that at this moment we have one controller so my app dot controller so we have one controller called as customer so i'm just registering my customer class with the app and one more point i want to mention here you know probably i missed that point and i would like to just uh, you know emphasize it in one html body or in one html file you can only have one ng app again i repeat in one html file you can only have one app you cannot have multiple app you can have multiple controllers they belong to the app but you cannot have multiple apps now just uh, again a bit on these uh, parameters you know what are passed to the controller function um, now what we are seeing here is that um, we are saying that we want to attach this customer class and this is uh, you know the name actually for example this can be customer here and you can say you can register it by the name customer obj and so this is like a, a key you can think about a name you know which will be referenced in the html so you can see the actual name is customer but i have registered it as customer obj you know so i can just say here obj so basically that first part the first string over there is nothing but it is the name of the controller you know which you want to use inside your html in the angular tags or in the angular directive and this is the actual customer class right so great so we are all set our app is done inside the app we have registered the controllers you know and we are ready to go and run this page uh, now very quickly you know just before I do the control F5 and run this inside the browser you can see that I have registered the controller only once but I have created the instance of the controller multiple times so you can see here this customer controller is registered by the name customer obj and it is done only once i did not say again register it but you can see that i have used it multiple times over here so remember that this is just a registration process it just says that okay inside this app this controller is there but how many instances will be created will depend on how many times you have used ng controller so here you can see that I have used two times the ng controller so two instances will be created but I don't have to go again and again and say that my app dot controller like this but in case I had something called a supplier for example let us say that I had a supplier over here like this right then yes you know then for this again I have to say my app dot controller supplier right so remember that for a the the, registra the the registration process is only once but the instantiation process you know can be multiple times right so let us go ahead and do a control f5 and let us see the output inside the browser if everything is okay or not and there you can see that my browser is running the first thing what you see over here is uh, you can see that we already had some initial data right which we had supplied to the class and you can see that the data is automatically binded you can see over here these expressions are displaying the values inside the div tag and because of that ng model because of this ng model you can see that the variables have got binded to the text boxes now as we said that this instance is different from this instance so in other words if i go and change over here it should not go and affect this instance right so if I go and change here, if I say this is Shiv Koirala, I'm sorry. If I go and say this is Shiv Koirala, you can see when I type here, automatically the object gets changed and automatically it goes and updates the div tag. But it does only for this controller instance. You can see at the top, 
this is one instance and this instance here does not affect the top instance remember every time you write the ng controller a new instance is created so you can see that two instances are created and um, the binding is happening absolutely fine so you can see how uh, easy it is with angular to do binding you know i just type here and it is done here you know i just type here it's binded here right so remember that the whole point about angular is binding binding and binding it is a binding framework if you ever go and search angular on the web very quickly if you ever say angular js right you come to this site here angularjs.org look at this what it says mvw framework mvw right so what is the model here the model here is this javascript object this javascript class right that m stands for the model what is the view here the view here is this div tag this customer screen and what is the w this w is that whatever code now what happens is some people this code you know which binds the model and the view some of the people call this code as the view model some of the people call this code as a presenter for example if you are a asp.net web form guy even you can call this code as a behind code some of the people call this code as a gel code whatever is that code which binds this ui and this customer so that w stands for whatever so remember angular is a mvw framework it is a binding framework it helps you to connect javascript object with the ui so i hope that you know the first time when i said the definition some 30 40 minutes back i hope that it is now getting clarified right so it is a mvw framework and it is really really super heroic okay uh, great now i would like to emphasize uh, two points about expression so let me do like this you know i'm going to go and delete one of these div tags here because the purpose of showing multiple div tags and multiple controllers was that to show you that you know there were multiple instances internally right so let me go and delete this now i need to make two important statements about expression the first thing is that the expressions what you see over here you know do not need any kind of an element for example at this moment i have put inside a div tag but you can happily go and delete this so you can happily go and delete this and say br and a br so basically uh, uh, expressions uh, don't really need any kind of a tag you know they can be displayed anywhere that is the first thing and second thing is expressions get evaluated in other words you can go and write expression saying one plus two and it will show it as a three or you can go and write expression saying okay show me a customer name a plus customer code so it will go and concatenate both the variables so basically expressions get evaluated okay so expression don't think about you know it is a you know it is just to go and display inside a div tag or a span tag no it can be displayed anywhere irrespective it is inside element or outside element uh, and second is expressions get evaluated mathematically and uh, you know functionally so in other words you know it can get concatenated concatenated or it can get added and so on right so if i go and run this so rather than running this i can just go and reload this so there it is you can see this is a concatenation right and this one plus two here says three right so that is a mathematical operation so that is a very important point about expression they get evaluated and they don't need to be contained inside any kind of a html tag so great so our application is running so smooth you know so i just type a smooth and it comes inside the div tag smooth right but I hope that life was smooth, you know, the way our first application ran here. Um, everybody has issues in life. We have problems in the same way when it comes to programming languages. You know, we also have problems. We will get into issues. We get errors. So let us try to understand that what kind of common errors we can get in Angular. OK, um, now remember that Angular is case sensitive. 
Because why Angular is case sensitive? Because JavaScript is case sensitive and Angular uses JavaScript internally. So in case, you know, the first mistake, you know, what a lot of people do is they do something like this. You know, the, the scope is completely in small letters. So I've seen developers doing this. So if you do this, right, nothing works. So the first sign that Angular is not working right is that you start seeing your expressions like this so that means that oh angular is not working angular has not get got loaded something is wrong here so none of this thing will work here right so how do we go and detect this error remember i said use chrome why because chrome is the friend you know when it comes to javascript debugging right so you have chrome here i can see that angular is not working because i am seeing the the expression curly brackets right away displayed so do a f12 f12 actually pops up the developer console right so the first thing what you see in the in the chrome chrome developer tool is you can see the red sign over here i have, I have moved my mouse you can see this red sign here which indicates that there is an error right so let us go and read this error in order to read this error you can see that there is something called as console here so click on this so first thing is you will look at the right hand side and you'll see oh there is an error yes and then go to the console and uh, you get some kind of a cryptic message you know it, it does not say like you know like uh, dollar scope is there you know the dollar scope error or something it just gives you some cryptic message saying injector unknown provider right something in in Greek it looks like a Greek language right for us remember I said that angular works on dependency injection so basically uh, these objects here these services actually you know I, I shouldn't use that word objects it is services of angular these services are injected by angular so angular comes in and injects this object so when you get this injector uh, unknown provider so it says that i don't know what is this dollar scope with the s capital right so the first kind of error which i always see is like dollar injected provider so this means that there is something wrong and you can see that it does provide you here saying dollar scope but at the first time it is very difficult to get about this error so remember whenever you see this injector error there is something wrong over here right so that is the first kind of error so if i go and fix this and if i reload this it should work so the first kind of error which you see is the injector error the other kind of error you know which is very easy to understand and identify is uh, for example now you know you can see that I'm saying an angular dot module but now let us say I type the M capital you know for some reason uh, you know I just go and type the M capital so if I run this now I will not get an injector error you know but there will be some different kind of a error and let us try to interpret it so I have done a control F5 again if this says that my angular is not running that is okay I will do F12 here I will go to console and you can see that there is an injector error here but don't get confused first look at the top error remember here you can get confused because now you are seeing an injector error but look at the top error it says that angular dot module is not a function right and it also tells you the line number so you can see here when I click on this customer.html, it actually goes and, and points me here. So I you know in this case, you know, you know, it, it clearly says that what the error is. So again, this is a second kind of an error. So one is an injector error uh, where you go and type something wrong at the top. And second is, you know, in case you go and invoke the Angular functions with the wrong name. And uh, one more kind of error, which is very common is, uh, you define the controller name with customer obj and uh, for some reason you go and mistype here the name right so in this case again uh, you will have problems um, you will say f12 console and it says that customer obj is not a function and got undefined right so the c is capital right so again when you when you get like this you know that means you know something is wrong with the name right so uh, so these were some common errors which you can get in angular and uh, and and I, I just showed you that how you can debug them now remember that in case you are a person from microsoft uh, you know remember that visual studio does not have these capabilities of debugging because visual studio is a tool which is for c sharp right so really it does not have those debugging capabilities of angular the way chrome has so remember that chrome is your friend if you are doing angular now when you are learning angular 
don't learn tags after tags after tags in other words you know don't try to create a big list of dictionaries saying okay what is a ng controller what is a ng model uh, what is ng show and ng hide and you know uh, ng directive you will just get into learning directives you won't learn the internals of angular internals of angular is more important than learning a long list of directives so let us go ahead and spend spend some time talking about how does angular work internally how does he create these objects internally can we see these objects can we visualize them or can we actually look at them and uh, you know understand angular better uh, let me go ahead and copy two div tags here right uh, so i have just copied the div tag back again uh, so two times i have copied div tags that means we are going to have two instances over here so what happens what happens internally when a angular page loads inside the browser what happens first so first when a page loads which has angular syntax in it the first thing is the browser goes and runs over the html and creates the dom so for example now you can see this is the html over here so the browser is actually an interpreter right so it will interpret okay this is the this is the body so he will create a document for this after that he sees this is a div he will create a div uh, object for it so internally the html browser whatever it is chrome or internet explorer it goes and it creates a dom which has a window at the top then a document then a then a div tag or a form whatever it is so it creates the html dom once the dom is created and ready in memory after that angular runs so then angular starts and when HTML runs, so when HTML is running and creating the HTML DOM, what it does is it neglects those syntaxes which has hyphen. So he sees this syntax and says, oh, this is not my syntax. I can't do anything about it. Yes, this is a div tag. Let me parse it. This is a body tag. Let me parse it. But whatever is the hyphen, right? Whatever is the tag or the attribute with the name hyphen in it, he leaves those tag. So browser does not touch any tag with the word hyphen right once the complete dom is loaded in memory after that angular runs angular says okay where are my hyphen tags he says oh this is ng app so let me create an object internally oh this is ng controller so let me create an object internally oh this is again an ng controller so let me create one more object internally okay this is an ng model let me set the values of the object so once the dom is loaded what angular does he first goes to the ng app he sees this ng app actually because we have written this angular module dot load my app so he goes here automatically he knows that okay this my app has to be parsed he sees this my app and internally he creates a top object called as dollar root scope again i repeat once the dom is loaded uh, html dom is loaded angular parser runs he looks at this ng app and creates an internal object called as dollar root scope after that the parser moves ahead and he sees okay there is a ng controller so he creates a dollar scope object again he sees a ng controller he creates a dollar scope object then he sees a ng model so inside the first dollar scope object he creates a customer name variable then he creates a customer code variable again he sees a ng model he creates a customer name variable inside the respective dollar scopes so in other words there are two objects in memory one is the html dom object and then afterwards the angular world angular world you know where it has its own dollar root scope and scope objects so this is good uh, but i would like to actually see that dollar root scope and scope i would like to actually feel it um, so if there is really a dollar root scope object the next question is can we access it yes you can access it you know the way you have you are accessing the dollar scope object you can go and say to angular please give me a dollar root scope so you can go here and say that please give me the dollar root scope object and you can go and create a variable on the top of it you can see that over here i am saying that create a variable called as counter on the dollar root scope object and i am saying that in case the counter variable is not created then return zero so you can see the statement here i am saying that in case the counter variable is is null or it is not giving out something then give zero and add one to it so 
the way you are accessing dollar scope object you need to go and access the dollar root scope object again dollar root scope object is also dependency injected so now if we go and display this variable now remember that this is a global variable right so i can display this global variable over here right or i can go and display this global variable anywhere right so i don't need that this global variable should be inside a instance of a ng controller because this counter variable belongs to the dollar root scope so now guess what should be the counter value that should be displayed here one two or three guess think for five seconds one two three four five <laughs> right so have you thought no let me tell you well uh, remember that you know this ng controller here uh, we have two ng controllers here right so that means that you know the object of the customer class will be created two times so this code here will fire two times so two times means this variable should be displayed as two so let us go and do a control f5 let us see that if we can see two here and you can see the value two here right uh, and let me do something like this let me go and put a debugger here you know sometimes when we debug you know things looks much better right so i put a debugger here and i will do f12 again chrome debugging and let us see uh, you know in a debug mode how our application is working so i'm going to go and do a reload the time i do a reload it actually comes here now you can see this is the first time the instance is getting created that means this instance is getting created for the first ng controller great so it goes here it instantiates that counter value makes it one now i run it fully you can see again the debugger has come here why because again for the other ng controller he creates an instance right so again this is for the second time and we see the value two so remember one is you know we have two in memory document object model one which is generated by the browser which is termed as the html dom which gets created created normally and the second one is the angular document object model which has the dollar root scope and the dollar scope objects but now think about a realistic situation where uh, it is a live project it is a big project it is a professional project and in a professional project you know you can expect lot of lot of ng controllers because you know when you talk about a single ui you need the customer object you need the supplier object you need the address object so you have lots of lots of controllers and you would like to get a visual view saying that okay you know we have the dollar root scope and then we have 10 scope objects or 20 scope objects inside it and inside every scope objects you know we have these properties so how we can get a visual view of our angular document object model so for that you know we have lots of open source tool out there but one tool by which you can actually start is the batrang tool i don't know how do you spell it batrang 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 whatever it is i'm going to say it's a batrang tool so you can go to chrome here and uh, this tool is actually an extension so you can go to settings and uh, you can go to extensions and uh, you can see that I have installed this Angular JS Batrang, uh, but you can go here and click on this Get More Extensions, and you can go and search for the tool. So you can go to the Chrome Web Store. It's a free tool, you know, to start with, uh, and you can search for Batrang extension. So Batrang, yes, uh, uh, yes. So where is it? Batrang and say free okay uh, Batrang uh, where do I see it enter yeah there it is i'm so sorry i was just looking here and there so you can see this batrang tool here now remember you can see two batrang tools but the take the one you know which has a lot of people who have voted you know so take that and install this um, inside your chrome browser so once you do that you know for example over here now our application is running what i can do is i can do a f12 and uh, 
you know once you install the tool you can see this angular js over here like this so which says that this is our batrang tool so click on that and you need to go and enable the batrang tool uh, you know so that you can actually see the scope objects and the dollar root scope objects so click on enable and uh, once you click on enable uh, it just runs the application once so that it, it can start tracking so i can now go to batrang again so i can go to scope so you can see now so it says that okay uh, uh, what happened okay let me run again uh, Uh, angular js yeah there it is you know there was something so i just enable and disable it so you can see now it says okay so you have the top ng app and for this this ng app he has created a dollars root scope object and it has two properties you know one is the dollar id which is the internal id and the other one is the counter remember the counter which we created that is this now let us go to the second dollar scope object right remember that this dollar scope object is created because of this ng controller so you can see in that he says that okay this is shiv and this is 1001 and again you can see that there is a second ng controller and again for that you know there are some values if you go back and if you try to change something for example let us say i change this to shiva if i do that you can see that he says that okay the other controller instance customer name is now shiva so at the top you can see that there is dollar root scope and then down below you have the dollar scope object so this is the internal angular document object model which gets formed and just very a quick note about this tool this tool is very good to start with to understand the angular fundamentals but when it comes to real projects you know where you want to really debug and see the values and see the performance then there are some more better open source tool we can talk about but uh, it's a good tool to start with i don't use this tool personally when i work on live angular projects you know i have some different tools for consideration uh, but at least you know for startup today it's the first lecture i don't want to stress up with you know a lot of open source tool and confuse you so still it's a good tool to start up with now i would like to also point towards a very typical behavior of angular that is auto properties for example now think about this you have two properties here customer name and customer code and by mistake you go and type here customer name one okay let us say by mistake you go and type here customer name one so what angular does he does not throw up an error he executes it so if you go here and if you do a reload let us say you can see that it is working if i change here it is working but now the next question is that how is it working because i was expecting that you know we would land up into some kind of exception and it does not throw any exception so let us do like this let us go and reload this project again so reload this website and uh, let us go to angle let us go to our batrang tool and let us see that if we are seeing any exceptions so i'm going to go to the batrang tool here i'm going to go to angular js and let us see what happens if you see first thing okay we have the app and we have one variable here called as counter perfectly right then i see controller i have two variables here perfectly right the second controller perfectly right right uh, but where is the customer name one it is still it has not got created now let us go here and start typing the time i type it you can see now the customer name one variable has got created in other words when you define a property or when you define a variable in the ng model it automatically gets created now uh, i'm not really aware that why this behavior is there in angular but i want to just make sure that i communicate to you about this behavior because many times you know uh, you define the property uh, you, ha you have not defined the property you make a typo mistake in ng model and your application is still running and you are still wondering that why is it running so remember that angular has this typical behavior that if you define a variable in the ng model and if you have not defined in the javascript class it automatically goes and creates it so if this is a class uh, and these are properties of the class uh, definitely then a class should also have the facility to create methods right so let us say i want to create a method called as submit 
and the submit method takes this customer name and customer code and adds it to the database right so in order to create a method i can say that okay here is a method i'm creating called a submit and then you give to that submit a inline function right so you can see that he has created an inline function over here right um and here i can say like uh, for now i'll just say if dollar uh, scope uh, dot uh, dot customer name dot length is equal to zero then i will say that uh, it is not a proper data so i'll say uh, not a proper data it is not a good practice to put ui controls like alert you know to do ui invocation like alert or text box calls inside the uh, business class i think that this is a business class i'm visualizing this as a business class so putting alert is not a good idea here but at this moment just leave it you know we'll see what to do later on right and i will say and i will say here alert uh, this is a proper data right okay so a very simple method i have created called a submit and this method i want to go and invoke it from a button so let us say that uh, we have some button here let me go and delete one more screen from here you know we had created two ng controllers right uh, so let me delete all of these so let us say that i have a button here so let me create a button and when you are actually using visual studio one of the good things about visual studio is the code snippets so when you type input you can see this small scissor signs here so you can just say input and then say tap 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 right so just you write the word input and then you say tap 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 like this right so i can say a type button right and i will say submit right so now if we want to go and uh, invoke this uh, method here uh, normally what uh, javascript developers do they go and say uh, something like this you know they will say that okay on this button when there is an on click event uh, please go and call uh, the submit function right but now think for a while will this work okay i'm trying to call this submit function uh, you know when the click event happens so when the click event happens i want this submit function to be invoked but think for a while will this work so let me do a control f file let us go and test it so now if you try to click on this button you can see that it is not working right we are not seeing any one of these alerts right so why can you guess uh first thing let us go and see the error so let me do f12 and you can see that at the back end he's saying submit is not defined so s capital yes s is capital so can you guess why is he saying that submit is not defined when it is defined just think for a while i'll give you five seconds and also let me give you a hint this submit button this sorry this submit function at this moment belongs to the dollar scope getting it no okay so let me explain Remember I said, you know, we have two document object model. One is the angular document object model, you know, where we have root scope and scope, right? And the other one is the HTML document object object model, you know, where we have, uh, you know, your body and then forms and div tags and all those, right? Um, so basically what happens is, you know, when you call a change event or when you click or a click event, you know, in angular, it should first go to the angular DOM. Angular DOM will first interpret it and then send it to the HTML DOM and then HTML DOM will do the, do the invocation and the necessary updated HTML will be seen on the browser, right? Now, when I click on the submit, you know, and uh, when, I, when I have written that one on-click event, that on-click event, you know, is not telling that this submit belongs to which scope. Remember at this moment, this submit belongs to a scope. It belongs to an angular scope. So that submit is somewhere there inside in one of those scopes. So if you want to go and call this submit, you need to actually call the submit that belongs to that scope instance. Again, I repeat, you need to go and call the submit function, which belongs to that scope instance. So in other words, 
this submit button is not lying on HTML DOM or it is not a very general object. It is a typical native object of Angular at this moment. So if, if it has if, if it has to be called, it has to be called via the Angular, right? So that's why you cannot go and call uh, the submit button, the submit uh, function like this by using on click of JavaScript. You need to use Angular events. So you need to say ng click. So remember, Angular also has events you know which can be uh, created by directives or which can be defined by using directives right so if i do this now if i do a reload it should work you can see now it is showing proper data if i go and delete this it should say not a proper data great right so remember ng click you know is needed because we want to call the submit function and the submit function belongs to the dollar scope so only angular knows that is ng click knows how to access that submit function when you go and write on click of javascript he has no idea how this angular dom is internally so remember anyone who is external to angular like javascript or jquery or any other uh, framework javascript framework who is external to angular right he has no idea of the angular document object model and he has to go and make calls via angular great so that brings us to the end of this one hour session or i will rather say it is more than a one hour session right um, and uh, i would like to congratulate you to reach till this one hour and bear with me for this one hour so in this one hour we completed you know talking about why angular uh, we saw that you know how angular you know fulfills that mvw architecture uh, we talked about ng model we talked about ng controller we talked about ng app we talked about dollar scope uh, we talked about talked about ng click we talked about dollar root scope we talked about how to debug angular and what kind of errors you will get in angular we talked about something called as auto created properties and a lot of things we saw here so i hope that you enjoyed this one hour video um, now because that you have beard me for this one hour I would like to give you a small gift you know because I think that you know people don't even see today half an hour movies properly so in case you have reached till here I think you know you deserve appreciation so what I'm going to give you is I'm going to go and give you a nice ebook this ebook is nothing but you know it is it is having angular short notes okay small small angular short notes like what is angular js so with a nice diagram explanation uh, you know then basically what are directives in angular what are controllers what are these what are that you know so basically small code snippets and small explanation with nice diagrams and nice explanation so if you want this gift you know then i am putting two conditions before you the first one you have to reach you have to see this part of the video the one hour video which you have already done and the second one is you need to go and share this youtube video link either on facebook either on twitter either on linkedin or somewhere so once you share it what you have to do is you have to go and email us on questpond at the rate questpond.com and say that okay see here is the link i have shared right and uh, can you please give me this ebook and i will give it to you happily right so i hope that you know we share this knowledge out because i think if anybody who wants to kickstart angular then this one hour video would really really uh, you know bring him on track and in case you are a questpond.com member in case you have a paid member you don't have to do any one of these you get this short notes as download great now uh, with this we complete this one hour video so what is the next video on so the next video we are going to go and talk about something called as the angular digest cycle remember i said when you are learning angular don't learn angular directive after directive for example if you saw here if i would have just taught you like you know ng click ng model ng controller ng app don't learn directive after directive any angular training which has just directive after directive then you are not learning angular learn the angular internals like okay how does it create an instance what is the scope object what is this dollar root scope object right so so on so try to understand the internals of angular you know i think you know for directives you know there are a lot of great help on the main site itself right so the next video is again going to go in depth or into internals of angular how does angular work internally remember that uh, you know when you go and type like this you know this kind of automatic update 
needs a lot of work at the back end so it is very great to see this is happening okay it is all automatic and you know it looks so nice for small applications but you know to achieve this automatic definitely angular is doing a lot of hard work at the background so we need to understand this hard work because if you don't understand that hard work and for that hard work the other name is digest cycle so this is what is happening is all because of digest cycle so if you don't understand that digest cycle then you know you can have an angular application which is bad in performance so you need to know the repercussion of this auto update what is here right so the next video is on angular digest cycle